Okay, today on Tree Talk, we are discussing Eastern White Pine, Pinus strobus. I love Eastern White Pine, super easy pine to identify. Uh, it is also can get massive. So this one right here behind me is really big. I have seen bigger, actually. Uh, this is the largest tree in Eastern North America. So pretty cool. Uh, we are here kind of right smack in the middle of its range in Northeastern PA right now. Um, most of its range is kind of, yeah, Northeastern US, New England, Southeastern Canada. There's also quite a bit over in the Great Lakes states and then all the way down through uh, the Southern Appalachians up in higher elevation areas. Um, it is pretty common <clears throat> on pretty much any soil that you find. It's not gonna be in super, super, you know, boggy soils, um, but it can be found on high dry ridges. I have seen it growing right next to streams, you know, with its roots, you know, right there on the stream bank. Um, it can grow pretty much everywhere, but it grows best in well-drained soils um, and kind of music soil, like pretty much everything else. So I mentioned Eastern White Pine is pretty easy to identify. Um, the needles are pretty distinctive because they are the only species, at least here in the Eastern forest, you know, that I know of um, that have needle bundles, which we would call fascicles um, of five needles. So um, sometimes they'll have just three or four, but typically it is five. Um, also, uh, it's also called soft pine sometimes because um, the bundles are very soft. Some of our pine species have very rigid uh, needles. These ones are nice and soft and easy. Um, the cones are also quite distinctive. They're long and narrow like this. This is about an average sized one, but I've seen bigger ones than this um, and sometimes a little bit smaller. This is pretty average size. So um, Pinus strobus, uh, strobus means cone basically. So the uh, scientific name for white pine is basically pine cone, um, which I find very charming and adorable. Um, so uh, one of the other really distinctive features um, for Eastern white pine is it has very distinctively whorled branches. So you can, it might be hard to see um, from here, but they, they, it'll hold the branches in whorls. They're typically, you know, a foot and a half or so apart um, uh, going all the way up the tree. And uh, you can see now they are very good um, at self pruning. So typically you're, you know, if you have a huge one like this, you're gonna crane your neck way, way up uh, to see the very top of the branches. Um, oftentimes in sort of mixed hardwood forests where they're uh, most common here in PA, um, they can be towering above the canopy of all the oaks and, and maples and things. Um, and they'll be just, you know, 50 feet above the canopy. You can look out over a, a mountain vista and see the other ridge line. And there's these huge white pine uh, trunks, canopies sticking out above them. We call those sentinel pines because they're watching over the rest of the forest. Uh, one more thing about the identification before I uh, get carried away and, and talk about the ecology um, is the bark. So the bark I find pretty distinctive too. A lot of pines will get platy um, as they get big where we have the, uh, the they, they have plates when they're smaller too. And we have actually a smaller one over here that uh, kind of started as a low branch and now is kind of its own whole tree. Um, so you can see, you know, this is a pretty small little trunk we have those nice plates but over time they really accumulate and so we have these older ones here that are just covered in moss um, you know providing homes to all sorts of other life plant fungi and uh, and animal um, so uh, yeah we see these really deep uh, plates uh, going back way 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 a long time this tree you know it's hard to tell the age of a tree because it's so variable and it, it depends on light and soil and all sorts of things, but this could be, you know, a couple hundred years old. Um, these trees reach 200 years old pretty easily. Um, the maximum is about 500 years old, so a very long living tree in addition to being huge. Um, I mentioned how big they can get. I don't think I mentioned how big, uh, though I mentioned that they could get big. Don't know if they mentioned how big. Um, 200 feet is about kind of the maximum, which is crazy. That's huge. Now, usually it's a little over 100 feet is what they're reaching in, in kind of most average sites, but they can get to be really, really, really big. Um, and so that leads us to um, maybe talking about their, their kind of human value. This is one of the most important species um, in North American forest, I'd say, um, as far as kind of human use and history goes. Um, this was a, one of the big reasons why expeditions to, for Europeans to settle New England were funded, because the, the, Roy, the English Royal Navy needed a good supply of masts for their uh, armada, you know, their ships, um, their navy, uh, and they were at war with basically everybody in Europe in the kind of early 1600s, um, and we, you know, Europeans discovered this continent over here where there's all these massive, beautiful pine trees, which have huge 
um, trunks that could be made into masts, and we weren't at war, you know, with any European nation over here, so, well, let's fund colonies to start here, start cutting down these trees, and start sending them back to England. Um, now, uh, people started to see, wait, there's a lot of value in these trees. Why are we cutting them down and just sending them over here? Um, the king doesn't really help us out that much over here on this continent, so why don't we start our own industries? Why don't we start shipbuilding with these big, massive trees, you know, using our own mass? Why don't we start other industries using these um, as kind of the foundation of the economy here in New England um, and in the colonies? And so part of the revolution was kind of uh, it was agitated by frustrations over the regulations over the timbering of these eastern white pines. So, pretty interesting. Um, even the one of the battle flags in the American Revolution had a white pine on it. Um, it was just, you know, a really big, important piece of that history. So, pretty interesting. Now, uh, as we started to really not have regulations from the Crown, uh, we really removed a lot of the eastern white pine forest cover um, in New England. Um, and then when that was depleted, basically we moved over into the Great Lakes states and depleted those eastern white pines. So it really kind of helped spur that movement to the west. Um, and then there were other pine species that we started to use um, in the Midwest. Um, and then um, the eastern white pine has rebounded a little bit, um, but it's nothing like it used to be. It used to be the dominant forest uh, type, really. Um, a uh, lot of eastern white pine within our mixed hardwoods, but also uh, white pine stands um, and white pine mixed in with hemlock stands. And so that is where we are today, is kind of a mixed northeastern forest. Um, we have a lot of really beautiful old hemlocks, um, a couple big old white pines, and then a lot of our kind of northern hardwoods. So we have sweet birch, chestnut oak, um, and uh, sugar maple are kind of, I'd say, the dominant species here. Um, now I mentioned that uh, for a reason. So eastern white pine um, is um, not tolerant of deep, deep, deep shade, like some species, like, you know, hemlock is very tolerant of pretty deep shade, um, but eastern white pine is tolerant of some decent shade. Um, I've read that they can handle about 80% shade. Uh, they can germinate well, um, but they grow best when it's a little bit more open, so the canopies of these, of like a birch forest, is actually very ideal for eastern white pine because it has, it's evergreen, it has these needles near year long, uh, and so it can do photosynthesis in the winter when there's a lot of light coming in. And then the lighter canopies of birch trees and, and other kind of northern hardwood species um, allow enough light to get down to the forest floor so that once an eastern white pine establishes, it'll grow a little slowly for its first couple years, um, but once it gets turns into the sapling stage, it can really start to take off um, and then hold its own and eventually, again, kind of dominate uh, the canopy and you have these big eastern white pines sticking out um, above the, the hardwood canopy. Just wonderful, beautiful. It just feels feels like home here in, uh, in the Appalachians. Um, but uh, so for, we talked about kind of the historical uses for ship mass. I don't think I mentioned kind of the uses now in modern days. Um, it is a great wood. It's, it's pretty lightweight, uh, which is nice. Um, not the most durable thing in the world, but it's pretty durable. Um, it's really easy to work and it takes paint and stain really well. So it's pretty flexible um, back, you know, for hundreds of years because it was so abundant and so massive that each tree can be massive. It was used for almost everything. Um, now it's used more towards, you know, um, furniture, that kind of stuff. Um, but really important tree economically still to this day. Um, ecologically, also a really important tree. Again, it being, you know, that much mass, that much biomass that it is creating is really valuable in and of itself. That much space for birds to build nests in and things like that. Um, but a lot of things do eat the seeds. Um, they will browse on the needles, you know, porcupines, deer, um, uh, I've read that a lot of the eastern white pines, much like oaks actually, are planted by squirrels. They are uh, uh, gathering the cones, gathering up the seeds, burying them. Sometimes the, the squirrel will die or, or forget where they buried that seed and now we get an eastern white pine there. So really wonderful member of our eastern forest. Big, beautiful eastern white pines. Love them. Oh, and how could I forget, uh, they are also a great Christmas tree. So they are planted commercially for Christmas tree operations. Um, Pennsylvania is one of the top uh, Christmas tree states in the country, so I'm always very proud of that. Um, and our family Christmas trees are always eastern white pines because they're native uh, to Pennsylvania, and I think they make really good Christmas trees. So uh, there you have it, eastern white pine, great tree.